All right, we're starting to get a little later in the year. The leaves are starting to change and everybody wants to be out in the woods. Now, whether you're just out seeing the national parks or you're out scouting for deer, whatever it is, you're getting out. Uh, it's kind of cool now, but the temperatures are gonna continue to drop. Getting later on in the evening and uh, you know, it, it can get really, really cold at night. I would, Guys need to start thinking about uh, what are they going to do if they can't find their way back to the truck. Uh, you need to have those basics. Uh, food, water, shelter, fire. Uh, that's fine. This isn't a survival bag or nothing, but this is just my Carl's going out in the woods bag. All right. Um, the bag I like, this particular one, I get asked all the time by the viewers. What is it, you know, hey Carl, uh, what do you keep in your bug out bag? What is it, that, guys, this is not my bug out bag. This is not the bag I keep in the trunk of my vehicle or nothing, gents. This is, uh, it, it's made by Hill People Gear. I love their bags because, uh, I love all their shit because it's bomb proof. But this, anyways, just want to give you a rough idea of uh, some of the stuff that I like to carry with me when I'm out wandering around in the woods. Um, obviously extra, extra ammo for your pistol. I've got all my EDC stuff. I usually carry my, my Leatherman, all, all that stuff. I'm not gonna get deep into that. Um, just the basic bag, the things that I keep in it. And I'll show you some of my, uh, my favorite items that I like to carry. So it's starting to cool off. So I've got a jacket. Why am I not wearing my jacket? Well, because I've been walking through the woods, I'm sweaty. So sit here, you take your hat off, you're, you let your head breathe and uh, get all the sweat out of your clothing first. Then you can put on that cold weather gear. Uh, I keep a couple Nalgene bottles on the outside. This one right here is only half full. It's been knocking it back. Um, but you'll notice I keep canteen cups under them. I, it, all the survival ninjas, they'll tell you, oh, you gotta have stainless steel uh, bottles, stainless steel bottles. I, I got that, okay, gents, I love Nalgene bottles. So I keep, uh, I keep the, the metal cups underneath them. If I need to boil water or whatever, uh, I've got them, no big deal. All right, um, unsnap the sides so we can get in here. I love these little outside part it's actually uh, like a rubberized plastic cool part about it is when there's snow on the ground you can drop that thing down and you can sit your fat ass on it and it insulates your ass from being on the on the wet ground in the snow but I also you saw I use it to keep um, keep my jacket on the back anything outside like that outside pocket all my usual medical gear that you guys see, if you want to know what kind of medical gear Carl's carrying, watch my IFAC video because all my IFAC equipment is in here. Only other medical gear I keep in here is I keep a pill box simply because you never know when uh, the shits or something like that is gonna hit you in the middle of the woods and you need to have the meds for it. All right, inside of the bag, uh, everybody loves the life straws. Life straws are great, uh, but they're they're more of an emergency thing. All right, this one right here, this is called Survivor Filter. It's just like the life straw, but uh, you know, it's designed to be put straight into a, a water source to drink, or you can actually screw like Coke bottles onto the end of it. Um, you know, uh, drink bottles, things like that. Uh, the cool part about it, it's got a pre-filter, it's got a good internal filter. You can clean this, reuse it, Well, you can't do that with the life straw. And where the life straw will only get down to uh, 0.1 microns, as far as smaller the number, the better for getting out all of your Giardia, things like that. In other words, a life straw won't get out viruses, but uh, this survivor, uh, survivor filter here, it'll get down to... Uh, 0 0.05 microns. That's gents. That's virus size. So anyways, uh, 
Good thing I love the hell out of this thing. I carry that with me. If you gotta have fire, uh, fire starting stuff, obviously I've got a, a lighter in my pocket. I've, I, hell, I even have ferro rods on my car keychains, but it's got a blast match, small candle, uh, a whole bunch of stuff, tinder matches. I, I like to teach classes out of my bag, so I, I've got all this stuff for teaching the different uh, methods for making it. It also has a uh, signal mirror, the old military type, uh, and it's kind of if I dig around here, uh, th there's actually a whistle in here also. So you, you've got to be, have, be able to have ways to signal, stuff like that. Where's my, my straw at? Lay out my straw. I'm going to lay out some of this stuff so you can see it. I got the munchies out in the woods I like to eat. So I, I run almonds. In this case, I'm, I've got wasabi almonds. Why? Because they're too hot for me to eat. So I don't pound back the whole bag right away. But almonds are a great source of energy. Uh, they've a lot of fat and um, a lot of fat in them, a lot of protein. The, and with uh, that, a bunch of cliff bars. They're up top where I can get to them from the top zipper without having to open up the whole bag. One of my favorite items, my of the top two in this bag, gents, this is chocolate covered uh, espresso beans. Um, I like chocolate covered coffee beans. I didn't, I got in the habit of eating these things up on the mountain in Afghanistan because I couldn't make cups of coffee because the bad guys would be able to smell the coffee miles away. So anyways, I got in the habit of eating, uh, bringing coffee beans with me everywhere. Good caffeine, get you pumped up, and uh, the dark chocolate, it's a uh, great survival food. Love those things. Flashlights, things like that. I keep an uh, extra pair of socks and an extra hat. Uh, you notice I, I'm running them in Ziploc bags. I used, to, I used to vacuum seal everything with a food saver, and what I found was it's tougher a little bit smaller than using Ziplocs, but I was really hesitant to use things in the field. You got the gear, use it. That's the only way you're ever going to uh, stay proficient using it. So was, I use a lot of Ziploc bags. Why an orange hat instead of my black one? Sometimes you're out in the woods and all of a sudden you hear a bunch of gunfire. Uh, what is that? That's rednecks out there shooting. That's fine. Uh, all about shooting, right? But uh, you start hearing stuff like that, sometimes it's better to put on a, a blaze orange hat for when you're walking around. I keep gaiters. Um, you notice I run low cut shoes. In this case, um, I'm running Salmons. These are Gore-Tex Salmons. Depending if you all of a sudden get dumped in snow, or you're going through mud, or you get those, uh, those briars that they, they stick the little needles all over, your, all over your ankles, those are a bitch to walk through. So uh, a set of gaiters that I can put over the bottom of my pants. Uh, very, very handy. Uh, this is a stasha. It's basically, they took the old military poncho. Nobody ever wears it like a poncho. But uh, it, so it's like a ground tarp. It's very, very thin, very, very light, but very, very tough. It's got the grommets at the end, so you can use it as a poncho for a poncho hoots. It's got the snap, so you can uh, snap it up like a bivy sack. Uh, it comes with a 550 cord and everything for uh, tying it up between trees. Um, it was bomb proof. I, I love the thing. Um, saw. Knives are great, guys, for cutting. You notice I've got my, my good old trusty uh, fixed blade knife on the side, but when it comes to actually cutting wood for firewood, things like that, you really dull a knife quick by beating with it. Um, but a, a good Sierra saw or uh, some other folding saw like that, you're not going to have problems with it. Uh, my favorite knife sharpener, uh, you've seen it in some of my other videos, it's actually diamond edged. You just turn it around. If you don't know how to sharpen, it's got the built-in guides so you can get your angle correct. Uh, it, it's got ceramic on the side for sharpening fish, fish hooks and serrated blades. I don't, really, I don't really use that much. And then leather on the back for uh, stropping the blade at the end. On the big knives, honestly, guys, this is how I sharpen them. 
I hold the diamond edge blade in my hands and I run it down the blade like that. I don't use the rest of this thing. But uh, anyway, it's a great tool. It's good for pocket knives. It's also really good if you're not the best at sharpening knives. It weighs nothing, so it doesn't take up a lot of room in my pack. Obviously, gents, you've got to have 550 cord. Why? Well, because it's 550 cord and you use it for everything. Um, that said, I've seen people on, uh, on the internet, they talk about, well, you can repel with 550 cord because it's rated for 550 pounds. Not all 550 cords created equal, number one. And number two, the more you use it, uh, the, the less its strength is going to be. So maybe like a one-time body repel down something, you might be able to get away with it. I don't like to trust 550 cord for repelling. Uh, I, my fat ass bounding on the side of a hill, uh, I'm going to go over that 550 pound mark real quick. So what I carry is, I carry a flat roll of, this is actually Spectraline. Now it's the exact same size as 550 cord guys, but uh, it, it, it's rated for 1200 pounds, all right? And it's very, very tough stuff. Uh, it's a hundred, this is a hundred foot roll. Very, very small. I, I, this is my carry-on bag, right? Um, but out here in the woods, you'll notice I never use it don't ever mess with it for anything else. That said, if I ever got somewhere where I had to drop down a deep river bank, where I had to go down a small cliff face, something like that, I can run it around a tree, double it up, all right? Now I'm at 2,400 pounds and I can rappel down with it. Now to rappel, what do you need? Yeah, you need a rappel harness, you need a carabiner, you need a figure eight, uh, you need a helmet, you need gloves, all this stuff, uh, a good anchor point, good rappel rope. That's what correct looks like. If I just need to do an expedient rappelling, instead of having a rappel harness, you take the end six feet, hold your arms out. That's basically for your waist. That's six feet, guys. I tie a loop, bring it around my waist, pull it up through the center, take my snap link off the top, run it through. I now have my Swiss seat. My rope, I run it around the tr uh, I run it around a tree, a rock, something like that, and I carry one of the smallest figure eights that uh, Petzl makes. And uh, the cool part about this, uh, I'm sorry, this is actually a fusion. Run it up through uh, several times, and then snap link in with it, and I can I can repel effectively, not a cheap expedient survival school body repel. I can no shit repel well with this thing safely down the side of a, a steep river bank or a small cliff. I get to the bottom and all I do is I let go of one end of my rope, pull it back down around that tree, drops back down, I roll it back up, put it on my spool. And uh, anyways, um, so that's why I also carry this little lightweight figure eight Guys, I've used it in training. I use it in teaching classes. I've never had to use it in the woods. Never have. But that said, better to have and not need. So I carry that. I carry my roll of spectral line with me. I got another small bag of Ziplocs. This extra nice stuff. Good pencil headlamp. Um, the water purification uh, bottles. Uh, I've got a small bottle, uh, a small spray bottle of Repel. Um, uh, insect spray, a, another uh, another compass to go along with my other one. This is just a wrist compass, and uh, extra set of hex bits for my uh, for my my Leatherman, because be, you can use uh, bits on it. Why do I need that? You know, I used to never carry it until one time I was out and I had a scope mount loose, and I didn't have the bits with me. So, anyways, I guess it's post traumatic stress. You know, I got a little bit of Dane Bramage. So um, anyways, that's, that's what I'm carrying. Uh, this gents is just a little alcohol stove. I don't always carry this stove with me. Uh, sometimes I'll bring like the jet boil or something like that, but uh, I'll, I'll swap them out uh, simply because I wanna stay proficient using all my different types of equipment. But this gents is a little, you can hear it sloshing. This is just a little alcohol stove and uh, it's got the little grate you put in there, put it upside down and uh, it's actually supports putting my canteen cups on top of it. 
Keep some more matches in there and a lighter in case I forget my lighter or my stuff's dead. Uh, so I have redundancy. One is none, two is one. I think you just saw about nine different ways to start a fire here. Um, down in the bottom, right, that's it. Gents, um, of all my military people out there, as soon as you open it up, you guys are going to see this and you're going to be like, I know exactly what that is. See that? Oh, nice and soft. What is that? That's, uh, remember the old poncho liners? Uh, in, the, in the military, you get issued a, um, a poncho, obviously. You can make shelters out of me, wear it when it's raining, but the military would also issue what's called a poncho liner. It's a really, really soft um, blanket that's very, very smooth. It's got strings on the end so that you could tie it to the corner grommets of your poncho. Uh, and you can make a little bivy, uh, bivy bag out of it. Uh, my problems with it was it didn't have a hood, so you couldn't, or, or a hole in the middle, so you couldn't actually wear it underneath your poncho like an insulated poncho. Um, so what we used to do, though, to make it a better bivy sack was we would go down to Walmart, we'd buy, buy one of the 100 and something inch long zippers, We'd give it to my Bravo's, my weapons guy's wife, along with a, a quart of Baskin Robbins ice cream, and she would sew the zipper around the edges of it so that you could make a little sleeping bag out of it by just zipping it up. Um, great, dude, that lasted me for my, pretty well my whole military career. That's what I did. The cool part about a poncho liner is no matter how stuffed your rucksack is, no matter how much stuff you've got in it, this is always the last thing that you pack in the rucksack because you can squeeze it in all the little nook and crannies. It, it, it compresses and it'll always fit, always fit, always fit. Well, this is similar, made out of the same material. I love it. But this is actually, again, made by uh, Hill People Gear and it's called a uh, Mountain Sharape. Th what they did was they took the poncho liner and gents, they put a hood on it. It zips up and um, guys, this thing's awesome. You put it, over, put it over your head. It also zips around the side so you can have it zipped around your legs. You can be sitting there with the front of it flopped over you and you can stay underneath this thing for hours. All right, um, it keeps the snow off of you. It's good insulation and uh, anyways, even when it's just getting cool out, even while I'm in the cabin and you're around the wood burning stove, gents, this is this is my wooby. This is what you'll this is what you'll see me wearing. Uh, another thing I like about it is it's it's uh, dark gray on the on the flip side of it. So if I'm sitting in the rocks, panning out uh, across the lower field below me, waiting for that deer to come out, uh, it, it just makes good camouflage. You've got two choices. So anyways, gents, this is hands down my favorite piece of kit that I have in this whole bag. Yeah, all the extra sexy survival kit, it's all fine. Uh, oh, I got this sexy ninja fire starting thing. Guys, you, you can start a fire with a match. You can start a fire with a lighter. You can carry all the fancy food. Once you eat it, it's gone. Um, the, one knife is not better than another knife. One saw is not better than another saw. Uh, but I'm here to tell you, my Wooby will always be here for me. So hands down, gents, um, the Mountain Serape by Hill People Gear. This is my favorite piece of kit in my bag. If I'm going to be out in the woods, sitting in the tree stand, anything, this is, this is what you'll see me wearing. Uh, so anyways, gents, that is, gents, that's my whole bag, right? There's, there's nothing else in here. That's enough. Why don't you need all this extra stuff? If you start carrying all the nice to have great stuff, your bag gets too heavy. One, you're not enjoying being out hiking anymore and you're, you're not gonna have room for that mission essential stuff that pops up at that last minute. If it's a hunting trip, I now gotta think about adding laser range finders, things like that. So uh, try to have the essentials that you're gonna carry all the time as minimal as possible. Um, so that you've got tons of extra room. And that, that's it. I hope you all got, uh, got something out of the video. 
if you want me to cover my uh, bug out bag later on or the bag I keep in my vehicle, fine, I'll do that in another video. But this is just what I carry um, when I'm heading out in the woods and you've got the sun going down like this. It's, it's time to start thinking about setting up camp. All right, so uh, thanks for the support, all my patrons out there on Patreon. Uh, thanks to all the viewers for watching. You know the deal. Click and subscribe if you like the video. We have got a new video every Friday. And uh, if you're interested in taking classes with us, either shooting, uh, survival stuff, uh, just any other kind of situational awareness type stuff, you can find those classes at tacticalrifeman.com. Y'all take care. Shoot straight. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.